Hello friends, this video on chemical coordination and integration part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next one is pancreas. So now till now whatever we have discussed about whatever glands we talked about, they were all purely endocrine glands. That is the ductless glands. They do not have any ducts. They uh, directly pour their secretions into the blood. But now we will talk about some uh, parts of our body which are not an endocrine gland alone. They act as an endocrine gland but at the same time they might act as something else also. So one such example is pancreas. Now we cannot say a pancreas is of course a gland because it secretes stuffs but it is not an endocrine gland as such. It, it acts as both endocrine as well as exocrine gland and that is why it is known as a composite gland. Composite means which is a composition of both. So it acts as exocrine and it also acts as endocrine gland. So here we will talk about only that part of the pancreas which acts as the endocrine gland. So that endocrine part of the pancreas will be dealt with here. Okay, now before that, do you all remember where the pancreas is, the location of the pancreas? We spoke about pancreas and its role in the digestive system. So if you see, this is the stomach. This orange colored structure which you see, that is stomach. Just behind the stomach, you can see a structure which is hidden behind the stomach, a green colored structure. That green colored structure is the pancreas. So if you see, it is a leaf-like structure which is present behind the stomach. So that is the pancreas. So the endocrine part of pancreas is known as the islets of Langerhans. The name is quite fascinating, right? And I think for some of you, it might be difficult to remember as well. So let me explain you what does it mean? What do, why was it named the islets of Langerhans? Now, this is how we pronounce it, islets. Now, this was called islet because the, if you look at the endocrine part of pancreas, it is like some cluster of cells, uh, I mean, they are like patches present in some portion. Let us suppose if this is the pancreas. Now, if you look at the endocrine part of pancreas, it will be it, it will look somewhat like this. Some cluster of cells present in the form of patches. So it, it somewhat resembled the uh, appearance of island. Island means where you have water all around and some patches of land in lands in between. So that is how it looked like, and that is why it was called islet of Langerhans. So Langerhans was named after the German pathological anatomist who actually discovered it for the first time. So that is why it was called Island of Langerhans or Islet of Langerhans. So I hope now you remember. So it, it is basically islet because of the presence of irregular shaped patches of endocrine tissue uh, located within the pancreas. So the endocrine tissue was like unevenly distributed in the form of patches. So uh, th these islets, I mean, there, there was not a single islet. There were multiple islets present inside the uh, pancreas, and each islet had almost 3,000 to 4,000 cells. So, if you see these patches, there were multiple patches, and each patches were called islet, and each patch had around 3,000 to 4,000 cells each. So, each of them has. So, that is why it was named islets of Langerhans. Now, so if you try to compare how much portion of the entire pancreas is occupied by the islets of Langerhans, you will see that the entire pancreas has almost 1 to 2 million cells. So if you look at the entire pancreas, whole of pancreas has 1 to 2 million of cells, which is a big number. But when you say how much of how much percentage of this pancreas is actually uh, the are actually the so if you see that way, only 1 to 2 percent of the entire pancreatic tissue is occupied by the endocrine part of pancreas or the islets of Langerhans, only 1 to 2 percent. So as I said, it is located below stomach. Now there are two types of cells which form these islets of Langerhans. So what are the two types of cells? One is alpha cells and the other is beta cells. So two types of cells are found in these islets. Now, now we will see what are the hormones that are being produced by these two types of cells. Do they produce the same hormones or they produce different hormones? That is what we will see. 
Now let us look at the hormones secreted by islets of Langerhans. As I said, there are two types of cells which compose the islets that is alpha cells and beta cells. Now we'll see that each of these type of cells secrete a specific type of hormone and these hormones are extremely important. The first hormone which we'll talk about is insulin and insulin is secreted by the beta cells of Langerhans. So this insulin is very important. How? Because it lowers the blood glucose level. That means the level of glucose in blood. Because as I said you before also, that everything in our body has to be present in the right amount. So should be glucose. So glucose should be present in the right amount. It should not be very high in the blood, nor should it be very low. So in order to maintain that right amount of glucose, this insulin helps to lower the level of glucose whenever it goes high in the blood. Now structure wise this insulin is a peptide hormone that is it has peptide structures in it and how does it lower the glucose level in blood that is the most important thing. Now what it does is it acts on some cells like the hepatocytes, the liver cells and the fat cells. Now let us suppose these are the cells which are present in the body and surrounding these cells what is there? Blood. And in the blood, what do you have? Glucose. Now, let us suppose there is excess of glucose in the blood. Now, how can you reduce the level of glucose? By taking in this glucose inside the cell. So, if the cells start taking in the glucose, what will happen? The level of glucose in the blood will reduce. So, the same thing happens here. Insulin acts on the liver cells and the fat cells and therefore the cellular uptake of glucose, cellular uptake and utilization of glucose in these cells increases. Therefore, movement of glucose takes place from blood to these cells. As a result, the blood sugar level decreases or the blood glucose level decreases. Now, what, 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 which are the cells on which insulin acts? It acts on hepatocytes, that is the liver cells and the fat cells, that is the adipocytes. So, these are the cells on which insulin acts. So, what happens? Excess glucose in blood is converted into glycogen. So that is glucose is converted to glycogen. So that is how the uptake, when the uptake takes place into the cells, the glucose get converted to glycogen and it is stored in the form of glycogen in these cells. So this process of glucose getting converted into glycogen is known as glycogenesis. So we say that the hormone insulin activates or it promotes the process of glycogenesis where glycogen is formed from glucose. It is therefore known as hypoglycemic hormone. Hypo means less and glycemic. So that means it reduces the level of glucose in blood. So glucose becomes less in blood. Therefore insulin is hypoglycemic hormone. Now the other hormone which is secreted by the alpha cells is glucagon. So glucagon is the other hormone and it is secreted by the alpha cells. Now you will see that insulin and glucagon are exactly opposite to each other. So one is secreted by beta cells, the other is secreted by alpha cells. One lowers the blood glucose level, the other increases the blood glucose level. Like how I was talking about the calcium level, right? There was one hormone called thyrocalcitonin. Correct? And we had another hormone. So one hormone decreases the calcium hair level, the other hormone increases the calcium level. Similarly here, one hormone is uh, decreasing the glucose level, that is insulin. The other hormone, glucagon, is increasing the glucose level. So here the exactly opposite thing will happen. That is, this uh, hormone, which is again a peptide hormone, will again act on those hepatocytes and it will stimulate the process of gluconeogenolysis that is the formation of glucose from glycogen so it is exactly the opposite of glycogenesis so in this case what will happen glucose will tend to move out from the cells into the blood so glucose will move out therefore the level of glucose in the blood will increase so both are exactly opposite and they work in exact 
act in exactly opposite manner. That is why this is called hyperglycemic hormone. But we can say that both insulin and glucagon work together to maintain the level of glucose in blood at the right level. I mean it should neither be more nor should it be less. So exact amount of glucose should be present in the blood and these two hormones together help us to achieve that. So insulin and glucagon they perform opposite roles but they maintain glucose homeostasis. What is the meaning of homeostasis? The stable state, the state of equilibrium. So it helps to maintain the right level of glucose in the blood. Now what would happen if the level of glucose in the blood increases too much or it decreases too much. Now if it decreases too much we all know what will happen. What will happen if it decreases too much? Glucose is the source of energy. With the help of glucose only cellular oxidation takes place. Now if you do not have glucose in the blood that is a problem. But what would happen if the amount of glucose in the blood is too much? Does that mean that you will get too much of energy? No, of course not. Now let us see what disorders can take place. If there is too much of glucose in your blood, what will happen? It will be a condition of hyperglycemia. Now if this hyperglycemia persists for a very long time, that can make you a patient of diabetes mellitus. And in this diabetes mellitus, I mean, it is exact, it is a completely no undesirable disease because once you get this disease, uh, there are so many complications. For example, you would have seen many diabetic patients who suffer from diabetes. So the doctors advise them not to take in any sweet, anything which has sweet, whether it is um, uh, potatoes, whether it is uh, sugar in the form of uh, the sugar crystals or in the form of any form of sweets which can contain sugar or any form of sugar. So everything will be like uh, you will be completely uh, not allowed to eat any of them. Moreover you will have to do a lot of exercise because you tend to put on a lot of weight. Uh, your wounds take a lot of time to heal. So all such complications arise. So in this diabetes mellitus, it is often seen that glucose is lost even through the urine. Even in the urine, you can see the presence of glucose and that is how this disease is detected. So when you do a urine test, it is actually detected, so we detected whether uh, diabetes mellitus is there or not. So that was about the islets of Langerhans. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.